Superbase Launch Week 5 starts on Monday the 15th of August. Here's some highlights from Launch Week 4 where we got together with the Superbase team to discuss what's new in Superbase for enterprise level customers. The big update I think people are going to be excited about is we're now merging the pay go tier and the pro tier and that essentially opens up pay as you go pricing to more of our user base so, in order to help people stay comfortable with the pro tier limits we actually have spend caps as part of this pricing change and spend caps will always be set as default on yeah it's it's one of the reasons we even started superbase was because we hated that feeling of using cloud providers and then if you get unexpected usage or you accidentally leave something running, you always get this surprise bill at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, and we just wanted to tackle that problem. And so, it, you know, it took us uh, it took us a year and a half to get here, but we finally been able to introduce these spend caps. Um, so you can say, I don't want to spend more than $30 a month. I don't want to spend more than $90 a month. Um, and you can be certain that you won't be, won't be billed for more than that. A lot of this kind of merging of these tiers and giving people more access to um, self-serve features has really been driven by a demand for greater compute. And essentially, um, we're getting people starting to move over now from RDS or use Superbase as an RDS alternative. And with that comes a requirement for bigger kind of compute instances. Um, but folks don't want to be kind of bottlenecked by others, right? Like if the project's scaling and they need to kind of add that extra compute to really handle a workload we don't want to get in the way of that and we want to just allow people to do that themselves our pricing is at parity with rds if you are kind of using rds in your project but you want a more contemporary user experience or developer experience that's a big reason why we're seeing uh, people coming over to superbase so it's a good time to join the party okay and so the next Big announcement, and this is one thing that our internal team has just been super pumped about, um, is the expansion of the Log Explorer inside the dashboard. We announced not too long ago that we did an acquisition of Logflare, um, and so we have Chase with us now, who's going to maybe talk about some of the uh, the new cool features that are available or will be available in the Superbase dashboard. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we've kind of been uh, iterating on the logging stuff uh, since uh, the end of last year, and logging was going to be much more of a, of a front and center feature for people. And so we spent a lot of time refining the, the logging experience, and you can see how some of that is different and the uh, the biggest the biggest limiter that we had was we were we were artificially limiting uh everybody to like a day's to just searching like a day's worth of logs just because you know we were we were just we were just iterating on it um <clears throat> but now that but now that it's uh we were able to kind of dedicate some serious time to it that'll be that's expanded like depending on what plan you're on and we've got a lot more log uh, sources for you to query and we've enabled like uh, querying ba uh, base i mean it's been you've been able to query with full like big query sql um, but now you'll be able to potentially do some joins uh, across all the log sources if if there are some things you want to see there and so yeah it's just much uh much better yeah i i love the fact that you can uh, break down between like if you're developing on auth against the auth api you can dig directly into the auth logs and then switch over to the storage logs or switch over to the postgres logs just that ability to fl flip between and as mm -hmm. you say jo join between these sources is uh i just think it's yeah it's super powerful yeah, I mean it is like the so the edge logs edge underscore log source is um, as all our Cloudflare logs, but they're actually Cloudflare logs um, as seen from our worker, which is basically the same worker that you get if you use like Logflare. But uh, there's actually more metadata about the each request in those logs than you actually get from what. Uh, Cloudflare delivers via log push, which which also which also you only get if you're on an enterprise plan with Cloudflare. So uh, you just you get a ton of useful information about every request that hits your your API. Um, and so the next thing is obviously you can come to the Superbase dashboard and explore the logs there. But Chase, I don't know whether you want to talk about like the new endpoint we have and some of the exciting stuff that that enables as well. 
Uh, so we've decided to surface uh, a Prometheus compatible metrics endpoint for enterprise projects so that uh, if you have uh, some sort of Prometheus compatible infrastructure, you can point it to this endpoint and scrape these metrics into your own infrastructure. So then that way, um, if you're an enterprise and you're hosting uh, things that are expected to be uh, up uh, a lot of the time, then you're, you're likely using something like this to monitor all that. And, and you're likely using um, Prometheus or something Prometheus compatible. And uh, so this gives you a way to just super easily integrate uh, information about um, uh, your hosted Supabase deployment and into like into all that with the rest of your infrastructure. And then potentially, you know, create alerts and dashboards and all that with Grafana. Yeah. And I believe you've got a, a demo for us to look at. So you can go to our uh, repo forward slash live books. And there are two live books that we have in there currently. One for kind of getting PG bouncer stats directly from Postgres, but we're actually including those in the Prometheus endpoint as of like yesterday. Um, uh, but we have like this Prometheus polar thing. So you can kind of like explore and monitor your Prometheus metrics uh, ad hoc. Watch this repo because we're going to be rolling out some more live books uh, in the future that help you just and, and just show people how to like you know, programmatically interact with their um, hosted super based deployment. Um, but then you can pick a metric uh, and potentially a tag and then uh, graph it. And this graph, if you'll give it a minute, you can see like it updates automatically. And so here we're um, charting the replication, uh, the real time replication lag bites. So alerting on this is like important and uh, making sure it's always kind of like as low as possible. But here we can see that it's um, pretty healthy with this uh, particular mm. project. So it's pretty useful. Yeah, great. And some of the things that we're also going to be enabling in the future is more fine grain control over config for things like PG Bouncer and Postgres itself, um, because we have a, a extremely wide variety of use cases um, of projects that are being built on Superbase. And and a great example of one um, was Sound at XYZ, who uh, do NFT drops. So it's obviously extremely bursty traffic. And and I don't know how many PG is. Bouncer connections we are able to get up to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, so with Sound, um, we worked really closely with them. They're kind of a new NFT platform for musicians. And uh, they're, they're working on actually something really, really interesting uh, in terms of like, if you're an artist, you can... Uh, sign up with sound and do it's basically like an NFT drop. Uh, and they, I think with the Snoop Dogg one, they actually, like if you bought an NFT, uh, then you uh, potentially get like a percentage um, of the royalties from that, uh, from that song uh, when it, whenever it's played. And that kind of happens automatically because of, uh, you know, Ethereum. And every week uh, they do these drops and they've been getting bigger and bigger artists um, and just the traffic pattern is typically like difficult to deal with because it's just super spiky. Uh, but we've, we've helped them. So they'd like do a drop and then it's like, everybody goes to the page and then tries to, you know, buy the, like sign in and get the NFT, like all within the same minute essentially. And, um, so we, we worked with them on making sure that their, um, their super base, like uh, there's, there's lots of things that you can tune with Postgres typically and, and PG Bouncer and did typically uh, for, you know, the majority of use cases, the things that we've set as defaults work really, really well. Um, but in situations like this, um, it required a, a, a little bit of a custom config. And so we helped them set that up. And then this last this last drop with um, with Snoop did really well. They didn't have any issues with their Superbase instance, and uh, they actually had uh, some issues with uh, some other serverless um, infrastructure that they're using just because of uh, limits that they are imposing. It's been really fun uh, supporting them on on all these. And and obviously, if people want to get in touch with us and discuss your different use cases, if you think you know uh, Superbase is appropriate, or if you need help advice on on tuning then you can get in touch with us um but obviously we'll start to make all of these options um available 
by the dashboard so you can self-serve. Um, but we're still definitely can help with, with any questions people have um, or if they have questions around enterprise specific pricing, uh, support models, uh, you can just get in touch with us. Uh, we have an enterprise form on this blog or you can just email us on support at superbase.com. So, so far on Superbase, you might have noticed that we do backups for everyone every 24 hours. But obviously, the more serious your project gets, uh, it might not be enough. So we're pleased to announce uh, that we are going to have point-in-time recovery now available. Um, and so you can get in touch with us if you if you would like to try this out. And it just basically means that, you know, you can uh, reverse time back to back to any point um, and, and restore from that point. It kind of does exactly what it says on the tin. The next thing is SLAs and enterprise support. So I'm going to bring Rory back in to discuss some of these things. Um, kind of as Chase was mentioning earlier, like a lot of the things that enterprise customers are asking for is at the moment relies on SLAs and better support packages um, than they'd expect with the standard pro tier. It's one of the first questions that we get people asking, you know, like I really love Superbase, but what does your SLA look like? And can I get more support? We've been doing a lot of hard work behind the scenes to make sure our support is kind of moving in the direction of what we would consider world-class. And we've also got customer success managers ready to help with a kind of implementation plan and success roadmap to make sure that your project is as successful as possible. And we're not just kind of here to sell you like cloud infrastructure. We really want your project to succeed because that aligns with Superbase as a platform succeeding. And we're in a position where we've got some of the best backend developers in the world can that can help advise on your specific setup and implementation. I haven't seen a project yet that's come up that doesn't have like someone in the team who's deeply experienced or multiple people who have deep experience with an adjacent part of the tech stack um, which you might be trying to include in your setup. Um, so I think it's it's definitely worth kind of drawing on the team's experience to help with planning out your project. Yeah, and I, I was going to say, so every time anyone joins the team, um, we have this support first philosophy. And so we tell everyone when they join Superbase, regardless of your role, whether you're the CFO, whether you're you know a, a database engineer, um, or if you're a front-end engineer, um, your role, your first job is actually support. Um, and if a customer has issues or has questions, you respond to that that issue. Um, and so far, it's it's worked really well. And as you mentioned, because of the diverse experience in the team, um, we've already, I think, done a really good job of of helping people, regardless of of uh, the type of the project. Um, that they're running. So if you have any questions about anything you've seen today, you can tweet us at Superbase or you can contact the enterprise team. Um, you can also email support at superbase.com. Launch week five starts on 15th of August. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss a moment.